News. Lobbyists are fed up with politicians accepting their money and then not coming through. Opinion. When the automated police force orders you inside, that's just them doing their job. Remix. Remix. Even lost my job partially due to the whole global warming issue. Increase in oil prices. The guy's scared. This is Top Story with Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. I've been a listener for about 20 years. I'm, I'm talking to you, makes me feel better. Where the news meets your opinion. Pick up the phone and talk about it. 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. Well, good morning and welcome to Top Story, 736-0300. Always the number to call. And good morning, Jill. Good morning, Kelly. Well. What's new? Thank you. Did you have a good weekend? I had. I have a great day. Really? I have to tell you. Right before I came to the show, I know listeners have been listening for like, what, the last week and a half? Right. I've been so upset. I separated my driver's key. I lost my clump of other keys that had all this stuff on it. And guess what? I found the clump right before I came here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jill found the clump. Isn't that a relief, though, when you when that happens? Oh, my gosh. I had to call Tom. I should have people call in and guess where I found the clump, and I'd give him a cookbook. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where did you if find you it? If you can guess, well, should we do that or not? No. Oh, I don't know. All that, right. That's kind of leaving it. Wide. That's just way oh, open. Oh, yeah. That's... Okay. I, I even went back to Fred Meyer yesterday to check a second time for my clump. They gave me a new little um, rewards card, you know, which I was really upset. I was going to lose my rewards card. I've, I've gone to the farmer's market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found the clump. Today I was going to get my keys, my new set of keys, which I just now spent $60 on to get the automatic <laughs> opener for of my course. car. Yeah, of that was course, just, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And... <clears throat> I have a side pocket, two side pockets in my purse, and I'm getting my key, and all of a sudden I feel like, wow, how come it's not coming up? Well, there's a hole in my purse. It's a new purse. It does, shouldn't have holes. I've never noticed a hole before. So I'm pulling it out, and then I feel another thing. My clump was in the bottom of the purse, which is so weird because I've checked this purse. I've <laughs> emptied this purse. You would feel a clump in there. You would hear a clump. Anyway, I'm so grateful my clump has reappeared. Wow. Hit hallelujah one more time. One more time. <laughs> oh, I should say. Oh, my gosh. See, miracles happen every day. I'm telling you. <laughs> Someone told me, in, God, in God's eyes, nothing is lost. That's I'm true. I'm like, well, God hasn't shown me where it is yet, and it's driving me crazy. But he finally did. Thank you. I mean, I had, now I'll tell you what I had on there, the storage room key for rotary I had a key to my friend's business on there. Like, oh, I had a lot wow. of stuff on there that, you know. Wow. I'm just glad I didn't replace the storage room key. Actually, I had my storage room key on there as well. Thank you. <laughs> so my clump is back and safe. Well, good. I'd like to thank all the support I've received. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we've got Terry Kramer coming in to talk yeah. about an upcoming Rotary event. We've got Randy Staples with the Idaho Political Update. There is a protest going on this morning at the Fishing Game Office in Jerome, I guess. And I think this might be the call to tell us about that. Good morning, well, Tom Story. And, my wife and Kelly's wife grew up. Tag. We got them. The Hello. Kids. Hello? Any, anybody there? Hello. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, who are we talking to? This is Mark Parker. Hi, Mark. How, Hi, Mark. What's going on at the Jerome Fishing Game? Well, you know, we put in for the draws, and on their, their regulations, they said the kids nine years old could put in for permits. If they turned 10 before the hunt started, they were eligible to draw. Yeah. And I know of a few of them that actually drew. We had a friend that gets on the Internet. I'm not really Internet-wise, but this one kid is. And he said his kids had drew, and one of them drew two deer tags. And anyway, they end up pulling the tag. So my grandson's 11. He drew a tag, and he took his tag back. Now, why are they telling them they can do that? And then they go and pull the tag. They're just trying to get revenue for themselves, and then, like, Pass those tags out or what? You mean they didn't give you your money? You have to put in money for that, don't you? We sent in, we had to pay for permit to put in for those draws, and then it showed that they had drawn, and then when they went to pick up their tags, they pulled the tags on them. Oh. Okay, so. And they're not really giving legit reasons why. I mean, Fishing Games put this out, and then all of a sudden they're reneging on things, and there's a lot of people that's pretty unhappy about it. I want them all to call in and, and yeah. then have Fishing Game answer this question for us because they're dropping the age 
limit down to where the kids can hunt, and they have to have an adult, 18 or older, if I understand right. It, it's getting a little ridiculous, all this hunting and stuff. But this money is supposed to be out to help the game and wildlife, and, and we're seeing a lot of money going into their new vehicles and all their buildings and stuff like that, but we're not seeing it. They used to have a bird farm over in Jerome years back. They'd replace the birds when they get a little depleted, and then they say it wasn't cost-effective. Well, these tags that we were paying for are supposed to help promote that. And so okay. what's going on with them? Yeah, now I was reading an article about that this morning. I guess they ran into some logistics problems or something, but it's kind of odd that they would pull the tag. Maybe they will send you a refund. Well, I hope so. Last yeah. time, usually they don't give you the refund on your permit. You know, when you put in, they'll let you draw, and they pull the tag. They better... They should get refund. There's a lot yeah. of people talking about going hunting out of state and not even paying for fishing game this next year. Hmm. And that's not going to help fishing game a bit if they start losing revenue. So you've got how many are over there protesting? Well, right at the moment, there's six of us. I know there's some more coming. Okay, and you got signs up and everything, so oh, people yeah, will know what's going on. Oh, yeah, we're on the highway. Everybody can look at us driving by. Okay. So have you tried to call fishing game? Did you call and ask? Oh, yeah, we've called them, and, and I don't know. just the, I can't answer all the responses. I didn't call them myself, but another friend of mine did. And, and, and so uh, they just they just pulled the tags. Yeah, they pulled the tags, and, and my grandson is eleven, past the age of ten even. Hmm. Well, so that's the thing that's making us kind of wonder why are they doing this? They yeah. tell us we can get in there starting at the age of ten now, yeah, they and did. draw them tags. They got in there, they drew it, and then when we went to check out, they pulled their tags on the internet. Well, i uh, tell you what, we'll keep up on this, and in fact, we'll, we'll even try to get a hold of uh, Jerome Hansen to see if he can uh, explain this, but uh, actually, thanks for I calling, think... and we'll we'll keep in touch, all right? I appreciate that. Thank all right, you. yep, okay. yep, thanks for the call. Wouldn't okay. it be Kelton? I actually think um, Jerome is transferring to Lewiston. What? Yeah, I just heard that last night, that he got the Lewiston. Jerome Hansen did? Well, mm -hmm. he's still in charge of the of the of uh, this district, but Kelton Hatch would be a good Kelton, one, too, and we, we have him Kelton. on on the second course, that'll be a little ways down. He'll be on the we second can always week call in July. Maybe we'll call him at the yeah. break and see if we can get an answer on this. But no one, I don't know, no one in the fishing game, I, I wouldn't, I know this was kind of a, kind of a blow to a lot of hunters and such, but if they're going to pull <clears throat> the uh, permits, I'm almost assured that they will issue a refund. So but, we'll try to call him at the break. Yeah, we we'll, we'll try to get him on. If he doesn't listening and calls anyway, top yeah. story. This is John Christensen. Hi, yeah. John. How are you? Good. How are you this morning? Doing well. What's going on? Oh, we're just calling in to, for support for, you know, fishing game, this debacle that they've created for themselves. You know, they they helped write the laws. They helped pass the laws. Then they, they decided not to follow them, and so now they're in the mess that they're in. Are you with the group uh, that's protesting? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um... Yeah, we're going to try to get a hold of Jerome Hansen or Kelton Hatch or somebody, see if they can answer. Yeah, get a hold of Kelton. We yeah. want to make sure that Virgil's aware that, you know, if they weren't going to let these kids put in, they shouldn't have took our money, let them put in, and then tell them they drew their tag, and now they're going to take it away. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, I Again, I read that. Thanks for the call. I yeah. read that story this morning and thought, well, that's kind of interesting, but I didn't realize they had pulled them away without a refund, but there still might be a refund on the way. I don't want to well, get too carried away. I, I can understand why they're upset, you know. But, well, yeah, um, why pull them if you say, because, you know, they did say 10, you know, yeah, down to 10. What was it before, 12, and now they moved it down to 10? I think so. So I, I you so. have to wonder why. Anyway, yeah. I, 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 we'll, I can't we'll try imagine. to get a hold of Kelton at the break. I can't imagine Fish and Game pulling those back after you paid money and then not refunding the money or doing something to make up, you know, I, I, first of all, I think that would be illegal. And, uh, yeah, second, secondly, it would be, uh, secondly, it would be unethical. But why so, would you, uh, why would you do that to yeah. little hunters? They're trying to, <laughs> to build that up. Yeah, I don't you know? know. There was some sort of a logistics problem or somebody was complaining about something. So they were pulling back and, and kind of regrouping on this. So they were, uh, it was a bad the, rollout, uh, apparently. Uh, I don't it was know. a bad rollout. Yeah, uh, oh. Terry Kramer's here and he's shaking his head shaking yes and shaking July. his a July a July first thing. Oh, you gotta wait oh, till okay. July first, Terry? So, oh, so the ones who pull them will get their stuff back? Oh now he don't so so you had all this good information <laughs> and until it really get down to it really gets good and then you don't know. Terry. <laughs> what's what's the word? <laughs> 
No, uh, he's being quiet now. He's like, he's, yeah, he's going to wait. We'll, we'll talk to him. We're going we're to talk to Terry Kramer about an upcoming rotary, but we got another caller coming. Oh, Let's yeah. see if maybe they know something. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you guys today? Doing good, well. How are you? Good. Hey, I read in the regulations because my boy just turned 10, and my boy understood it, is they can put in for the second chance drawing in August, but not the first one because the law doesn't go into effect till the 1st of July. Oh, so that's That's why. what it was then. Okay, so... That's the way I read it. I didn't put my kid in because it's stated right there that yeah. their age, they have to wait till after the law goes into effect. So then they, so I, so the ones who pulled... I'm assuming the ones to... who made that mistake maybe will get their money back. That's what I would guess. That would be the right uh, thing to do. It's just an honest mistake. But it states in the regulations, unless I misread them, that not until the second chance drawing. And... Okay. Well, we'll try to well, get that's Kelton. What, yeah, all right. Well, hey, thanks for that input. Yeah, yeah, we'll try to get a hold of Kelton or Jerome Hansen or somebody to find out about that. Uh, but, uh, wow. <laughs> Here we wow. Are. Monday morning controversy Bill. already. Protesters at the Fish and Game office in Jerome. So... Well, I'm but, sure they're, uh, they're probably You know, I don't know. I've, I've dealt quite a bit with the uh, fishing game around here. And well, should we try I don't, to call I don't think they're gonna, now? I don't think they're going to leave you holding it. Well, we're we're coming up on a break. Oh, yeah, we are. Do you, okay. you have his number in your cell I phone? I do. Why we'll, call him at the, we'll call him at the next segment and yeah, see if we can get yeah, him. Yeah, we'll, we'll call him during the break, see if we can yeah. get him on and, and just or at least have him give you an answer. Yeah. If he's too busy to talk, maybe he can at least give you an answer. Maybe yeah, don't he's, worry. you know, so in we'll a throng find out about of that. protesters and he can't get to his phone to call us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good luck, Kelton. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to find out about that. Speaking of uh, July 1st, we got the July 4th weekend coming up and gas prices are up. Prices will average about three sixty eight a gallon for regular grade gas, which is up 17 cents from last year, but well below the all-time Four dollars and eleven cent record set just after July fourth of two thousand eight. Mm. You know, I know people complain about gas prices going up a few cents and going down a few cents, and I used to do the same thing. And finally, I just realized, you know, it's just the way it is. There's yeah, it is. nothing we can do about it. Uh, whether they're taking advantage of us because of the situation in Iraq, or, or every just, summer or it goes whatever. up. Yeah, every, every summer, summer it goes up. Sorry. It's just it's kind of picking your battles, you know. Yeah. Uh, that is a battle, but there's other battles, I guess, that are that I have a better chance of winning. <laughs> uh, I do know this, though. If I were going to sell my home, that would be a battle, but I would take that battle away from myself by giving it to the folks at Core Group Realty because that's what they do. And uh, the uh, Gabe Cordova and the crew say if you want to sell your home, give them 24 hours. Just give them 24 hours or 48 hours, but be serious about it. Because chances are, if they list your home, it's going to sell. Because they have a whole database of buyers right now who are ready to buy. They've been pre-qualified or they have the money all the way up to $600,000. So uh, if you're selling your home, you're going to upgrade or you're going to move out of the area for some reason, Core Group Realty is the place to go to sell your home. 933-2673 or get more with core.com. If I were going to sell my home, I would be calling Gabe right now. So you should do it if you're home, if you want to sell your home. The key is if you want to sell your home. If you just want to fiddle around, then don't call them. But if you want to sell your home, call Core Group Realty. We got more coming up. We'll try to get a hold of uh, Kelton Hatch or Jerome Hansen here. Get some answers here on Top Story. Whenever the music starts. You ready? You're on, Jill. All right, all right Jerome. Uh, am I Kelly on or are you on? Stand okay, by. welcome back to Stand Top by. Story. Okay. We have Jerome Hansen on the line. Oh, and my gosh. He had just pulled up to the... you got to lower that music count. Okay. okay. All right. Now we're now we're going here. Okay. Okay. Jerome Hansen, are you there? I am. How are you doing? Thanks, Good. Jerome. How are you? We're doing okay. Well, we got some calls this morning uh, from folks saying that their they're kids who are under 12 now put in for the youth hunt they drew and then they withdrew the tags and they were a little upset so we thought well i'm sure there's an explanation so let's call jerome hansen and get it all straightened out (laughs) (laughs) well here i don't know exactly where we sit but i what happened we have the new law um that allows um 10 year olds to hunt big game right um, and 
but because the new law didn't take place until July 1, those younger kids weren't eligible to put in for controlled hunts. Okay. Which we t- typically um, do in June. Okay, so so then so you <clears throat> withdrew the ones that that got the tags, right? <clears throat> well, no. The oh, okay. the decision last week was to be, and again, I I don't know exactly how um, various ones slipped through the cracks, but it seemed to be mostly where a younger um, ineligible child was put in on group applications, and somehow it slipped through the cracks. So we had approximately a thousand ineligible youngsters okay. really? that that had put in for the drawings. And the, again, the drawings, the deadline for putting in for controlled hunts was June 5th. And then sometime after that, we do the actual drawing in June. And so when that was all said and done, when the smoke cleared, we had several ineligible youngsters. And hence that would have made the uh, other folks on the group drawing also ineligible. Oh, okay. so I think Yikes. at that point we were um, kind of between a rock and a hard place in terms of which direction to go. Do we um, kind of redo the whole thing or let those ineligible folks stand? <clears throat> and 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 again, ineligible is kind of it's just basically because the new law didn't really take place until July one. Okay, if this was all. You know, if the new rule had taken or the new law had taken place before July one, every everything would be hunky dory. But the problem is, a lot of younger folks did not put in, i.e., because they were told they couldn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of, kind of this point. No matter what we do, we're gonna. So I guess make the folks kind of upset. So as we sit here today, uh, I know that the director's office was kind of reconsidering that. Um, and I have not seen which direction we're going to go. Uh, so we've got folks out at the road, um, which I assume those folks are upset. Yeah. Uh, from last week's decision. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were, and I was just kind of curious, so you don't know what's going to happen yet. They may, they might go ahead and be able to accept those or they might get their money back or what they might be out out of luck and no money (laughs) well again the decision last week was to accept the ones that had put in ah okay and and then basically the folks that are upset are probably a mixture of folks including the you know parents of the younger kids that didn't put in because they were told they couldn't and which was correct, or it may be other people that put in for those same hunts that didn't draw and are upset because... Well, the ones we got calls from are the ones who put in for it. They got them, and then they were withdrawn, they said. (laughs) Well, see, that's why it's a little confusing. Um, So, in other words, you really don't know yet what's going on. No, in fact, I can tell you what our news release, um, it said we'd received numerous phone calls and emails from hunters all over the state who feel that a different solution is necessary. Um, This discussion will continue during the next several days until a final plan of action is reached. So, yeah, we're, you know, we're trying to get it right, but it's, there is no way like so many decisions we make to make everybody happy. Yeah, I guess, yeah. you know, I've, I've said this before that, I mean, I know there's people listening that <clears throat> probably are, are upset about it. And to those people, I certainly apologize. I would say <clears throat> that it's, I guess it certainly shows the passion that folks have for hunting yeah and 
Well, we're about out of time, Jerome. That's the good news. Yeah, uh, exactly. The bad news is we kind of got to we got to get this figured out. Okay, so in other words, no decisions have been made yet. So tell the protesters to hang tight because uh, good news might be on the way. Well, it's not going to be good news for everybody because, um, again, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Be right with you. We've got a break here. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Okay, here's what we did with Jerome Hansen because we have Terry Kramer here to talk about a special scholarship fund coming up. Then we've got Randy Staples at eight forty. So Jerome Hansen is going to get on the phone and uh, find out what's going on, uh, where they stand on this deal with the uh, the young hunters getting their tag or their uh, permits withdrawn. And so we're going to. Call Jerome Hansen again at 9 o'clock. I mean, literally, he just pulled in yeah. when I called him. I think we kind of caught him a little off guard. I, I know we and did. And so uh, we'll <laughs> Which give is him, never fair. <laughs> we'll give him a chance to catch his breath here a little bit, and hopefully he'll be able to uh, give us some answers at 9 o'clock. Like he said, though, there's probably whatever decision is made, there's probably going to be a few that aren't going to be happy I know, about huh? that deal. So anyway, we'll find out more at 9 o'clock with Jerome Hansen from Idaho Fish and Game. Meanwhile... Uh, call Kelly at 404-2997 and say, I would like to see one of those low and honey loaders in operation. And he can fix you up because I know there's several of these low and honey loaders around the area now from Stanley and company that are you know, picking up that manure and depositing it where it should be. And if you have a feedlot or dairy and have need for one of these, you might want to see one of these in operation and think, hmm, that would sure be handy on my place. Mm -hmm. So uh, 404-2997 is the number to call. That's Kelly with Stanley and Company, and he can get you fixed up. All right, we got Terry Kramer here this morning. Good morning, morning, Terry. Terry. Good morning, guys. I guess I should turn up your microphone. Do I have a microphone? You do. He does that to me all the time. I do. Oh, I know. Sure, half the show I, I don't have my microphone on. <laughs> I think he does that on purpose. Oh, I know he does, yes. Well, exactly. You've come down to the bottom of it, Terry. <laughs> so what do you got going on? Because you're so, here for your Rotary hat. I am here to promote the Buell Rotary Club fundraiser. We've done this for three or four years, and it is a scholarship raffle. We have worked in conjunction with CSI to get a one-year full tuition scholarship for CSI for anyone who wins this raffle. Wow. So we are selling tickets during the 4th of July, and then on the twenty uh, on the 24th of July, the end of the month, we're going to have a drawing for one spectacular winner for a scholarship. And this scholarship is good for the 2014-15 school year or the 15-16 school oh. year. So you have two years to use the scholarship. Fully transferable. So is there an age limit at if, all? Nope. So if but if a grandparent wins it, they can give it to their grandkid, or maybe grandma wants oh. to go back and get a degree. Oh, so wow. that'd be nice. It's totally transferable. You can use it for anyone. The people that have won it have been really excited about this, um, and and it's an opportunity, you know, to get an entire year's full tuition uh, for anyone in the entire valley who wants to do this. So we'll be selling tickets. How much are the tickets, The tickets Terry? are $5 each. That's or five it? For, for 20. college education? Yep. Wow. Five for 20 and they will be for sale at the di- different venues at the uh, Sagebrush Days in Buell. So West End Senior Citizens has a trout feed on the 3rd. We'll have a booth set up there, and then we'll have at the Pancake Breakfast or the Kiwanis. That's going to be on the 4th. We're going to have a booth set up there. Or you can call uh, any of the Buell Rotary members, but one of the special ones that they would just love to have you call yeah. is a friend of yours working yeah. at SOS. I thought it was Terry Kramer. I nope. thought you were going to get one. Nope, what? I'm, <laughs> sending, I'm sending those calls to Barbara. Oh, Barbara. So Barbara at SOS in Buell at 539-5471 has like a big stack of these tickets. She's got a big announcement on her Facebook page about it. You can read all about it. Uh, Actually, so, SOS is owned by my brother-in-law. That's right. That's why I, I said that. Okay, yeah. Oh, so we have a conflict of interest going C- clearly. here. Clearly. Huh? No, no. We have a <laughs> we have an opportunity to get the uh, the tickets for this fabulous drawing from uh, Barbara at SOS. Oh, okay. They're in Buell. They're right or on the main any of the street. Venues. How much are we talking about? How much would be a full year? Well, they say it's worth about twenty five hundred dollars. Wow. wow. So that's, that's not, a pretty good for a five dollar investment. That is oh. not bad. So Terry, here's my question: Do yeah. they have to pay tax on that? Is it over six? It's over six hundred dollars. Would that be considered a prize Here's, where they'd have to pay tax on it? Ladies and gentlemen, the Jill scheme stumper question. That of the was day. my eighteen years as a paralegal question. Um, that is a really good question, and I am not sure that 
Because a lot of times we gifts to, over I 600. I don't think you do. Uh, you should check that one out. I don't think you do, but um, if you get uh, scholarship, <laughs> do you pay taxes on scholarships to college? I don't think college? you do. You I don't pay, think well, you, you pay do. on uh, gifts. I mean, you get a free car. What's the difference? So back in 18, <laughs> back in 1840, when I went to college and got a scholarship, I didn't get a 1099 I just on think that. You should, I so. just think you should I don't check. think you pay income taxes on, on scholarships and such. But you do on gifts, so this I'm just wondering through, if this is a gift. This is through uh, CSI itself, and so it really never gets in our possession, and it, and it only can be used for CSI's education. And so yeah. I will actually ask you our should just find out, people yeah. if they have to do that. I remember I won a vacation package. From here, and I had to pay uh, taxes on that one. Right, you oh, do. Really? Yeah. Anything yeah. six hundred dollars yeah. and right. over. Right. So I'm sure Rotary will cover the taxes if they have to pay it. I'm sure they won't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. so only, it sounds like only Jill would yes. bring up the taxes. Oh, it's the this. legal Believe side of me. We welcome to, to buy my the world. Tickets, <laughs> come to the Buell Sagebrush Days. Have a great time. We'll be at the trout feed. We'll be at the pancake dinner. Or you can go over to to SOS Office Supplies. It's right pick on the up main those drag. Tickets. Yeah. yeah, or anybody that looks like a Rotarian running around there with a Rotary shirt. <laughs> or Terry will have Kramer. A ticket. Call Terry right. Kramer. Kramer. You can call me anytime at the office. I, Number? 736 uh, 4068 and say, I want some tickets from Terry Kramer. All right. Right. We're out of time. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Appreciate Terry. it. 736-0300 is always the number to call. We have uh, Randy Staples up next with the Idaho Political Update. But before that, we're going to get a lesson on renting a mailbox. That's right. Here's your lesson. Step one, go to the UPS store located on the corner of Blue Lakes and Addison. Step two, say to Charles or the crew, I need to rent a mailbox. Step three, tell them Joe or Kelly sent you. And then guess what? They're going to give you one, two, or three additional months free, depending on the length of the lease that you decide to do. So while you're there, this is step four. You can look around, you can print, you can ship, you can package, and you can buy a cute little animal card. So go to the UPS store in the corner of Blue Lakes and Addison. And also, they have no drop-off fees for prepaid packages or mail. So go there and tell Charles and the crew that Jill and Kelly sent you. All right. Uh, before we get to Randy, I see that uh, the Supreme the Court has made a decision on the Hobby Lobby issue, which essentially Obamacare was forcing Hobby Lobby to provide uh, birth control for people on their insurance. And apparently the Supreme Court has ruled that they can't do that. So no, they ruled just, in Hobby Lobby's favor. Right. Ruled yeah. in Hobby Lobby's favor. As I well just, as the against the unions, 5 4 both decisions. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting uh, stuff. So maybe I we'll think have that's a, a dangerous, that dangerous precedent. If they decide, if they were Scientologists and decided you couldn't have certain things, I think this is another horrible ruling by the Supreme Court. Well, Boy, they're we on can, a roll, man. We can they're talk, on a roll. We can talk about that coming up. But right now, we do have Randy uh, Staples with the Idaho Political Update. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. Good morning. Rather than talking about national stuff right now, we've still got Idaho issues going on. Although, doesn't it tug <laughs> yeah. at you a bit, Randy? <laughs> Don't you want to? Yeah. All the mistakes that the Republicans are making are propelling, could possibly propel the Democrats to victory. Yay. What do you, what do you well, say, Randy? Well, there's the there's the uh, the thought that came up. Uh, I did a uh, wrote a column for uh, this this last weekend on the uh, kind of following up on a column that somebody else wrote. Uh, Mark Johnson, who used to work for Cecil Andrews years ago and has been a kind of a political consultant and and doing a number of other things in recent years, made the point that if you look back over the last half century and more. Of, uh, of Idaho political history, it's usually been on occasions when Republicans make mistakes, when they, uh, uh, when when something goes wrong with either a specific office holder or something a little more broadly, that Democrats wind up uh, uh, being able to take advantage and and seize an office or two or three, mm -hmm. and uh, that's happened over the years, and it it usually takes some pretty clear, identifiable sequence of mistakes, something that, that really kind of grabs people's attention and holds their attention for a while uh, leading up to the election. Uh, now, I'd, I'd, I'd have to say that this year it's hard to know yet whether that's going to be the the kind of situation that's uh, that's going to arise. Well, and then We're too, still the... too far away to know for sure, but the potential's there. In the past, yeah, you pointed out that uh, those were like for individual office holders, whereas this deal we have today with the uh, the situation at 
in Moscow at the Republican convention. This kind of deals with the entire Republican Party. So we're, it, in a way, I guess it's kind of apples and oranges, wouldn't you say? Well, to a degree, but uh, but there have been occasions like this where where the party has uh, has uh, uh, paid a price a little bit more broadly. In 1990, the party was was pretty deeply split. Not as not as uh, as uh, as deeply split probably as it is today, but uh, there were there were factions that were really going at each other then, and they paid. That was one of the reasons that they paid a price then. In 1958, which is the last time, if you go back in, in history, that's the last time that Idaho Democrats won the legislature. That's how far back wow. you have to go. Mm. But the last time that they did that, you can trace the reason for that specifically to a Republican initiative that year in favor of right to work. Now, years later, the, the climate in Idaho had changed, and voters supported right to work. Mm -hmm. But in 1958, they weren't there. And when Republicans pushed that, Democrats pushed back, and they won practically everything. Hmm. They just swept the, uh, swept the ballot for every office except governor. Interesting. And, uh, it, uh, you, you, know, you know, it takes a little bit of, uh, of calculation at all times to recognize where you are, where the, where the people are, and make sure that you've got some alignment. So what do you? What's your gut feel for this year? Well, my gut feel for for this year right now is that probably Republicans will mostly right themselves in time. Uh, they're they're not doing a very good job of getting that taken care of promptly. No, yeah. they they, they uh, they're not going to be meeting in terms of their party organization until early August, and that means that they're going to be sitting here with more headlines more people sniping at each other and with the situation undetermined during a period when they should be organizing their campaigns. Yes. And that's what they would ordinarily be doing. That. Well, and the candidates will be doing that. Now, but there'll be a lot of Republicans who will be sniping at each other during this time. We've got two meetings coming up, too. It's August 2nd for what you might call the more traditional GOP, I guess. Then he got August 9th, which is the one that, that Barry Peterson has called. So, uh... How are they going to resolve this, or are they, or do, or do they need to? There, well, there is, there is. Everybody does seem to agree that that the party's central committee, which is uh, which is made up of members from all the counties, from across the all the counties, legislative districts, membership from across the state. Uh, there is, I think, general agreement that the central committee is the group that can finally resolve it, make a decision, and then move on. Um, and but, that's kind of, and that's the one on the second. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one on the second. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see what happens then. We'll see whether whether everybody accepts that. Uh, I don't think so. If they, an, if they have another meeting August ninth, how could everyone accept the results of August second? Well, that's a good question. Uh, and and you know, there's there's kind of the point where where you would think that there would have been an acceptance of what the what the uh, kind of the reality of the situation was before this point. Uh, I, I would think that in most past years, a decade ago, say, I don't think that something like this could have happened. Yeah. Now there, I, I don't. I don't think that it uh, it just would have been in the cards at all. There was a. Uh, there was a. But, a, a I don't know if he was a former legislator or a current legislator, a Mister Razor, I think it was, out of Rexburg. Who said? Mm -hmm. Who was was kind of on the Barry Peterson side? He said, "Oops, sorry, I read oh, yeah. those. I read the rules wrong. The uh, chairman and elected officials are only in for two years." He says, "I goofed. I made a mistake." What's mm -hmm. that? What What's that going to mean for the April night or for the uh, August ninth meeting? Well, you would think that it would that it would help kind of set the table for that in a pretty clear fashion. I think that ultimately. What's probably going to have to happen is that there will be a new election for chairman. And what part of what makes it a little bit more complex is that it's not clear if it's not Peterson who it would be, because there were there were two other candidates right. for the job. And there, by the time uh, the central committee meeting comes around, who knows? There could be more than that. Yeah. The field could have changed yet again. And the ones who wanted so, to, they might have decided, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Well, that's always possible, and and uh, you know you could wind up with the with the situation of of uh, 
a, no leadership really on the one side and and uh, some leadership on the other side, which seems to have uh, not enough people supporting it and uh, and not enough uh, not enough of a base. Now they said also it would affect how many um, I think delegates Idaho would have at the Republican National Committee. I think last time I, I misspoke and said convention, and that starts August 9th. So we would go from three to two if this isn't resolved. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's true. But uh, it, that probably won't matter an enormous amount for the short term. Uh, you know, it it, uh, it it does technically in terms of of uh, Idaho's voting strength there and uh, for the short haul, but there are not very many decisions that very many people are going to care about that are going to be made by that group for the next few months. But doesn't it Most, just show like how um, screwed up they are that you can't even get this settled so you have like your appropriate number? You know what I mean? It's just why wouldn't they settle this prior to that? So they actually look like they have something together at the Republican National That's why, National as Committee. my understanding, Michael Matthews called the meeting for uh, August 2nd, so they could get it resolved. Right, but then you've got the other faction for August 9th. They're not getting together. These two are not getting together. And whatever, well, I, this is my prediction, Mike Matthews, whatever they decide over there, this other group is going to say, no, this isn't what we agree to. I don't know how well, you get and, the two together. Well, and that's, and, and they're, the other part of it is that there may simply not be an agreement at all. There may simply be a part of what's, what is, I think has happened is that it's gotten to the point that there are some people who are talking in terms of the other side of being not just the other side and not just, uh, you know, kind of my adversary for the time being, but of being the enemy. And right. I've seen the word evil actually applied wow. in a number of cases. I've seen, uh, a few pieces from uh, letters to the editor, guest opinion, that sort of thing, from uh, from some of the people who are activists on that side of the equation, the, on the Peterson side of the equation, not Peterson himself, but some of the people who are supportive, who are using that kind of really pretty extreme language. Hmm. And when it comes to that, then uh, how do you uh, how do you compromise with evil? How do you uh, reach yeah. a resolution with evil? Yeah. And one group that, is there uh, not that, to that compromise. That becomes a lot more problematic. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay, we do have a, some other issues going on besides the Republicans, I guess. But I guess starting tomorrow, Idaho will be taking over the uh, Idaho Correctional Center near CUNA. Are we going to be ready for that? Well, the State uh, Department of Corrections maintains that they have. And, and I suppose that it should, uh, that it's likely that they will be. Uh, they maintain that uh, that they've... Uh, been working on it pretty steadily now for quite a while. They certainly do have experience with running prisons. It's not as though it's a new th new thing for them. Yeah, it's uh, that's been their job. They should have all the benchmarks uh, that they need from all of the other uh, prison facilities around the state. So well, I would I would expect that they will be ready to take it over. It it sounded like it. There was an article about the. I don't know, the person in charge. And, you know, they've been meeting with this and talking to inmates. It sounds like things are trying to make a smooth transition. So hopefully yeah, and, it and, couldn't and be and worse I, than I what they that's, had. That's probably going to be the case. It uh, Most likely there will be kind of a kind of a, a brief notice in uh, that you'll see in the newspapers and so on and that uh, that this has occurred, but probably not a lot of very visible changes Do you think it, it'll... you know if they're if not then i think there'd really be some real questions to ask but the department maintains that they're uh, they're on track they've been hitting all their marks and and uh, that's what i would expect to see for the time being randy do you think they'll, it, this will save the state money i think it probably will over the long haul yeah it's uh i don't i don't really see how it was ever possible or is ever possible really to do private prisons at at a proper level and save very much money because you do need to account for profit in there somewhere. Yeah, right. that's true. And that's what's true. happening with the lawsuit or the, was it the FBI investigation of CCA? What's going, do we know what's happening with that? Not too much more. We'll probably be seeing more, uh, uh, some more developments on that over the next few months, but that's been fairly quiet for a little while now. Yeah. I expect that we will be hearing a little bit more about that though. Well, one last question, and you only have a few seconds here, but it looks like uh, job growth is expected in the state over the next 10 years. I wonder if that's minimum wage jobs that they're expecting or if they're better paying jobs. Well, I'd take a look at what's, what's been happening in, in Idaho over the last couple of years, 
And minimum wage will probably be heavily represented, but you'll probably also be seeing some of the kinds of things the Magic Valley's been seeing in the last uh, last few years too. More mixture of the of the kind of a mixture then. Kind of a mixture. Right. Kind of a mixture of that. All right. Well, Randy, we are out of time. We appreciate it, and uh, I guess we'll see you next Monday. We'll talk to you then. Thank you Bye, very Randy. much. Thank you, Randy Staples from Rydenbaugh Press at Rydenbaugh dot com. You can uh, read uh, hear his. Uh, Weekly report right here on uh, Top Story, and also you can uh, subscribe, if you like, to his weekly update at Rydenbaugh.com. Coming up next hour, we're going to try to get to the bottom of this fishing game deal on uh, having the kids' permit hunting permits for controlled hunts pulled. So we'll be talking to Jerome Hansen from Idaho Fish and Game right here on Top Story. Wow, that must mean us, huh, Jill? I think so. Yeah. Welcome back to Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call always. Mm. No matter what you're calling for, call that number. And people do and have. <laughs> That's yes, how they we do. heard about what was happening outside of Fish and Game. Yes, and that is still going on. Apparently, we talk. Okay, here's the deal. Here's we got the a deal. Lot, lot of stuff to talk about. We got Supreme Court decisions to talk about. Uh, but I, the big deal around here now is that there are people who are protesting a move by Idaho Fish and Game at the Jerome Fish and Game office uh, because they put in for controlled hunts for their kids. The kids, some of the kids drew the permits, and then Fish and Game said that they were ineligible because they wouldn't be because. When they applied, the law was not in effect yet. The law goes into effect tomorrow. So what they had, according to Jerome Hansen, who's the current director of the uh, Idaho Fishing Game for this district, said that they were ineligible. So mm -hmm. they revoked those permits. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're trying to decide what to do, and, and this is where the rub comes in. If they decide to allow those who drew, even though they were too early before the law took effect, then the ones who did not apply because they knew they were not eligible and wouldn't be till the second draw, mm -hmm. they those people are going to be ticked because the first group of people right. apparently shouldn't have put in for the draw. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, And then the first group who drew, if they find those ineligible, then they are going to be ticked because, well, they sent in their money. So well, probably also, what's going to happen is, well, I don't know what's going to happen. And Jerome Hansen, he's out talking to the protesters right now. So I just called. Well, there in, were a uh, thousand kids that were ineligible. Yeah, exactly. And they said that if they were on what an application with someone else, those people were ineligible as well. Remember? They that's said right. Everyone, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's not just a lot the of kid. stuff. A lot of stuff going on here, and we got a call. I told a lot Jerome, of unhappiness. Okay, told Jerome to him. call the hotline okay. if you got a chance. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This yeah, apparently is Jerome. I just wanted to okay. mention on that hunt, though. I mean, you know, and Hanson didn't mention this in the regs. It is said that they're not eligible till after, till the second drawing. Right, but uh, so apparently some people misread that. Well, apparently they didn't read it, and it yeah, comes across right. like the director feels like if enough people break the rules, it's okay. Yeah, well, see, that's what they're... F I understand, yeah, I know where you're coming from. The uh, According to Jerome Hansen, Fish and Game Commission is uh, going to try to figure out how to handle this, but... So, in other words, the, the way you put it, it's, a, it's an easy decision. They're in, ineligible because they didn't read the rules. Yeah, it should be. The rule book's been out for several months. Yeah. I mean, I put in for a trophy hunt and didn't read the rules, and I'm not eligible for deer and elk. They threw me out. Oh, no. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. It's my fault. Yeah, all right. All right, well. Yeah, see, maybe they will. I don't know. Right now, they're just in a state of flux, so... <laughs> Poor, Thanks poor for the Joe. call. Appreciate when I it. called him, I don't even know if he knew there were protesters. Yeah. He hadn't even gotten to the office yet. I don't yeah. even think he got a cup of coffee, poor Jerome. <laughs> well, we he got more calls coming in. bastard yeah. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, guy. Yeah, you know, these, these, the kids are out. Period. It says in the book, they can't, they're not eligible until after the 1st of July, which would be the second the second drawing. I don't see any, there's no, there's no, no question to it. And something else I'd like to make sure the fishing game get out there. These kids are too young to be back in a high-powered rifle anyway. And I know parents ain't going to like hearing that, but they're just too damn young. 
and something that if the if the parents get caught shooting a deer for one of these kids, mm. not only should the parent get a citation for killing an illegal deer, but the kids should get a citation to learn their lesson about tagging an illegal deer. Mm. It happens too damn much. And mm. I'm, I'm as much a hunter as the next guy. But All these right. kids at 10 years old, they're not old enough to be packing high-powered rifles, going down through the trees. That's, they're, this, this is a bad situation, it really is. You know, I have to admit, uh, now that you it said seems that, young. I it did kind of cross my mind when I started shooting. I don't know, I was well, I was little, but I started with a twenty-two rifle. You know, I mean, anybody can shoot a twenty-two rifle, and yeah, some of these rifles, a thirty out six, you know, three oh eights and stuff like that, they get up there in pretty high calibers. And some of these ten-year-old kids aren't very big. I kind of wondered about that myself. I, I mean, I'm all in favor of introducing kids. To firearms as early as possible, but but maybe there are some instances where it's just not that prudent. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Well, I don't know if I agree that a ten year old is too young to shoot. I, I mean, he he. Well, is, he qualified, Dad. He said uh, to be lugging a high powered rifle around in the bushes. I mean, yeah. Well, you go back far enough, kids that old are going out to hunt for the family. Uh, but anyway, my big thing is, is if these guys put in for a draw that they weren't qualified for, how many people, like including myself, mm-hmm. that put mm-hmm. in for the draw and paid the money yeah. didn't get picked because right, right. a thousand of them did? Right, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's and that, a good that's, point. Yeah, that's where the rub. That's where the rub's going it's to gonna, come in. This thing is just but, exploding. Um, yeah, and then and then it's like I think. Uh, and I wish Jerome was here with us, but he's out talking to the protesters right now. But it's like you said, though, too, that uh, the group, if they put in for a group right. and one of them was ineligible because it didn't, the law hadn't gone into effect yet, then the entire group is out. Yeah. So, but, but that their just, rub uh... is, is that, well, Fish and Game accepted that and accepted their money, but I guess they have to go through those to make sure that they, well, know, they have, have to go through six, them and make sure they're all Yeah, if you have five okay, or six so. on there, I mean, it probably would take a, t- a time to say, oh, this, you know, this Yeah, kid's... and I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they cross-check I know. those. I know they do. I do know one thing, that if you, uh, if you get a hunting or fishing license before you are eligible, yeah. Say you just moved into the state and you haven't been here for 30 days and you get a resident fishing or hunting license and you're not eligible. They will catch you and find you and probably fine you. I'll so, find you and Idaho find Fish you. and Game, yeah. is, uh, I know they've always been now really up on it. Have, I have <laughs> talked to people who have been in this state for a year and the Fish and Game caught up with them and said, you know, when you first got here, you applied for a hunting license right. and you weren't eligible. They don't mess around. So, so they come after you. We could <laughs> so get them after at Al-Qaeda. Least, at least they used to, and I'm assuming <laughs> they still do. But uh, if we can't talk to... Uh, Oh, maybe Jerome, Jerome Hanson. I left a message on his cell phone because yeah, wow. we had arranged for him to come back on the air at uh, at nine o'clock. Maybe there was a uh, bigger uproar going on. Than well, we there could have been. There could have been. Because more I know people he were wants supposed to, to be going down there. I know he wants to talk to the people who are actually there in front of the office. Well, how do people? So. How pe- how would people think they should resolve this? Because the last caller made a very good point. He did. It, it prevented a thousand people. From getting tags because Who legally these, yeah, applied for it. Yeah, these um, kids were now ineligible. So what do you do then? Do you then extend the the draw? What do you do at this point? Do you redraw? Like what? And then the ones who have it legally, what do you do? Or do you just do the ones that you you don't have? I I don't know. This is tough. This has yeah. a well, lot of facets to it. I don't know. Maybe not as tough as you would think because if they did not read the rules and that was stated in the rules and they either did not read it or ignored it or whatever, then it looks to me like it's a no, that part cut and dried is, situation. That part's easy. The part is what the last caller said. If those thousand prevented other people from getting them, right. you never know. Well, but, but it could. How they, could it not? There's a thousand people that went to the thousand tags went to people. I that would. Were ineligible. I would think if they truly decide that those thousand are ineligible, then they probably need to redraw. I would think for those. Uh, those all say if they have a thousand that yeah. they withdrew, then they probably need to draw another thousand. I would think. So. You'd have but to have another job. I'm not in Idaho fishing games. So. And then how bad would you feel if you were in the group 
with the kid who was ineligible and then made you ineligible when you got the tag. Um, understood, but if the rule was the rule and, you know, if there are six people in the group and none of them read the rules, then it's, frankly... Hey, let's just put there. Bobby on here. Okay, they said they could accept 10-year-olds, and then you're all screwed. <laughs> so I don't know. It this is not sounds an to me like, fishing, like somebody in the, the head of the fishing game needs to make a, a command decision here and decide what's going to happen. Well, so. hopefully Jerome's going to do that, and he'll get back to us yeah. on this one because this is a tough one. I don't know what other people think. How else could they decide this? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's why you have rules and regs. Yeah, I understand and that. And if you're not going to follow the rules and regs, if you're going to start, that's like the one caller said, well, if you know, if you have a thousand people who broke the rules, does that make it okay then? So No, but then you think about they're going to have to have a redraw. There's no doubt. A thousand for the ones kids who, are, For the yeah. ones who did uh, put yeah. in legally and didn't draw. Yeah. Sure, I would think. I would think so too. What else could be equitable? But there might be something going on here that I am not aware of too, so... Yeah, there's clearly just, a lot going on that we're not aware of, yeah, I think. I, I wish... Uh, <laughs> we didn't even know there was a protest till someone called in, that's and we right. appreciate that. That's right, Thank we you. do. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a couple of Supreme Court decisions this morning. Uh, yes, there were, and a lot of passion on both sides. A divided Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four on Monday that closely held corporations, and these are actually pri- are, um, private corporations, uh, cannot be required to provide contraceptive coverage for their employees. So in an opinion, which was authored by Justice Samuel Alito, and some people thought by that that fact alone it was not good news. You know, like, oh, no, he wrote both opinions. Uh, the court ruled in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood Specialties versus Burwell that the Obama administration has failed to show that the contraception mandate contained in the Affordable Care Act is the least restrictive means of advancing its interest in providing birth control at no cost to women. I'm not even sure what that means. The least restrictive means of advancing its interest in providing birth control at no cost to women. I don't know. The opinion was written narrowly so as to only apply to the contraception mandate, not to religious employers who object to other medical services. That's good. Like blood transfusions or vaccines. So the Affordable Care Act contains a provision requiring most employers to cover the full range of contraception in their health care plans at no cost to their female employees. The Obama administration had granted an exemption for churches and accommodations for religious hospitals, schools, and nonprofits, but for-profit companies were required to comply with the coverage rule or pay fines. So Hobby Lobby, a Christian-owned craft supply chain store and Conestoga Wood Specialty Store, a Pennsylvania wood manufacturer owned by a family of Mennonites, challenged the contraception mandate on the grounds that it violates their religious freedom by requiring them to pay for methods of contraception they find morally objectionable. The owners of those companies believe some forms of birth control, emergency contraception, which is really the Plan B pill, and IUD devices are forms of abortion because they could prevent a fertilized egg from implanting in the uterus, but that's actually not true about Plan B. So if you're already pregnant, it wouldn't abort your baby. It's just hormonal would prevent you from getting pregnant. But anyway, so at oral arguments in March, the women's Supreme Court justices grilled Hobby Lobby's lawyer, former Solicitor General Paul Clement, about whether a for-profit company can be considered a religious organization exempt from certain federal laws. This is also disconcerting if they had, you know, anti-discrimination or minimum wage laws, if they felt were all violations of their religion. Are you now, is this now going to be piecemeal laws going forward so anyway that's what we have right now well that's what the supreme court decided so i guess that's uh what we'll be living with and uh i'm kind of glad seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call here on top story all right seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on top story friday's 100 hundred dollar instant winning name is rod cack rod cack Congratulations. And your $100 word of the day for today is barbecue. Barbecue. B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E. Barbecue. Barbecue. Go to our website, newsradio1310.com. Click on word of the day. Type in barbecue. Listen tomorrow. If you hear your name tomorrow and you played the word today, you get 100 bucks. That's how easy that is. If you don't, you don't. It's mm-hmm. that easy. All right. So we've got uh, Jerome Hansen, who's the... Uh, Regional Director of the Idaho Fish and Game with us here concerning this issue with uh, hunters who are protesting there. Are you there, Jerome? Yes, I am. Hi, all Jerome. right, all right. So to kind of recap here, we got some uh, hunters who are upset because 
uh, their kids or someone in their group uh, drew for the controlled hunts for the youth the youth hunt. And uh, then they applied before they were supposed to, so now they're ineligible, so they had to withdraw those permits. And now they're unhappy, plus the people who didn't apply because they would not because they knew they wouldn't be eligible uh, if if they give those permits now to the ones who applied too soon, then they're going to be upset. So, is fishing game kind of between a rock and a hard place, or what do the rules state? Oh, yeah, I, I think we're a little bit between a rock and a hard place. Um, so I, I want to step back a little bit. Th- this is all about our control hunt process, that people apply for the control hunts in May, and then it closes June 5th. And historically, um, kids had to be 12 years old to hunt big game. and kids were eligible to put in for the controlled hunts if they were going to be 12 when the season rolled around in the fall. Okay. That's, that's the way it's been for quite some time. This year, uh, we had a new law passed um, that allowed 10 and 11 year olds to hunt big game. And this is where the confusion has settled in, in that the new law doesn't take place until July 1. So youth um, that basically this year, even though 10, 11 year olds could hunt big game in the fall, um, they weren't, the younger kids weren't eligible to apply. Basically it was the same as in the past. Uh, Only those kids that were going to be 12 in the fall were eligible this first year because the new law didn't take place till July one. So right off the bat, as I try to explain this to you, you can kind of understand why there'd be a little confusion here and there. So we did our best to, uh, let folks know, uh, yes, even though kids 10, 11 can hunt this fall, they're not eligible to apply for the control hunts unless they're going to turn 12 this fall. Okay. Again, this only applied to this first year. So you can almost imagine that um, it wasn't a perfect system, and we ended up with about a 1,000 <clears throat> youth who were technically not eligible got into the system, along with about 2,500 adults who technically would be eligible other than that they were in group applications with these youth. Right. And so the drawing took place, and suddenly we were looking at, oh, boy, we've got, uh, out of those 1,000 kids, about 300 of them drew tags, apparently. And I don't know how many of the adults. but um, So here we sit with 300 kids that are expecting to get tags and, and the adults, so we the decision was made, well, we should go ahead and honor those kids. Then we got, you know, lots of concern from a lot of folks who didn't put in because they were following the rules. And those that didn't put in and then those unsuccessful control hunt people also weighed in like, well, golly, they, those folks took my tag. So here we sit. And the decision last week was made, let's go ahead and honor those folks that put in um, and, you know, allow them to get their tags. It was our mistake, uh, big time administrative effort to kind of redo all that. And so that was a decision. Since then, we've received a ton of input from folks. And again, I will stress, I will continue to look at the positive here and that this shows over and over and over how passionate folks are about hunting and and that's good it, um, did, did did fishing game really make the mistake oh if that was explicitly put in the was it was it put in the rule book that unless this condition occurs you are not eligible to apply until the second draw yeah i mean that was the rule but again it was confusing because you know we had this new law passed that 10 and 11 year olds could hunt except unfortunately it didn't take place Officially, it didn't go into effect like so many of our laws till tomorrow, July okay. 1. Right. So, um, so what's the final ruling, Jerome? Well, and that's here we sit. Um, the folks out there protesting are have heard 
because um, I mentioned earlier, we did put out a press release Friday that we were reconsidering because we have got such input. Um, Tell you what, I know you're busy. Can you? Can I get you to hang tight through this break and get you in an, oh, one sure. more segment? As long as you have some good commercials, I can listen. To. I okay, yeah, I promise. <laughs> I promise. All right, thanks, Jerome Hanson, regional director of Idaho Fish and Game, and we'll be right back. Seven three six zero three zero zero. The number to call. We'll get back to Jerome Hansen from Idaho Fishing Game here in just a second. But first, the Fourth of July is coming up. It's going to be this Friday. You, you know that? that. I know. Uh. Late again as usual. Any anyway, <laughs> give you plenty of time to enjoy outdoors. You'll have a three day weekend. Well, just in time. Bish's RV in Twin Falls has all Starcraft travel traders on sale. Uh, like a new 2014 StarCraft 24-foot travel trader that sleeps up to six for under 19000 Plus, their entire inventory is on sale. You can literally save thousands off a new or used RV with great financing options on your approved credit. Or you can let uh, let them help you in their parts and service department if you need. Uh, and accessories. They have a huge accessory department. So they're there to help you with whatever RVing needs that you might have. Uh, they're also f- serving free slow smoked pulled pork sandwiches on uh, oh okay on July third and fourth. Mm. So that will be Thursday. I'm sorry, on July third and fifth, the third <laughs> and the fifth okay. from eleven to two. They're going to be closed the fourth apparently. So okay. the third and the fifth go into Bish's RV at the Curry Crossing for slow smoked pulled pork sandwiches. Yum, there you sandwiches. Go. All right, um, Jerome. Uh, Jerome Hanson with us from Idaho Fish and Game. Okay, Jerome, I know you were in a, a thought when I had to interrupt you for the break, but do you remember what that thought was? No, I don't remember. I just started okay. thinking about food listening to you guys talk. <laughs> okay. I was going to run out and grab a sandwich. There you go. I, I think it was about the three. You were thinking that the 300, <laughs> the 300 kids would now yeah, be Yeah, and I was, I was just going to mention that because we did go down and talk to the folks down, out there at the road and, that appears to be what they're mostly concerned about is uh, that because they had some of the youth um, that were the younger kids that did draw. And yeah. they're basically saying, you guys need to, you know, we we drew, so we need to get our tags. So that was, I wasn't sure what they were, you know, yeah. exactly where they stood. So, okay. and and obviously you can understand that feeling so. yeah but like a couple of we've had a couple of callers on this and they said hey look if that's mentioned in the rules and they didn't read the rules right. then they're you know they're, yeah. and they're you out. can understand that feeling too. right yeah. absolutely right so. so i don't i really don't know uh what the final decision will be i okay i know that we'll do the best we can like we always do and what would um, happen if they decided not to honor those would they get their money back um well, I I don't know exactly how we'd work things out, but um, okay, all right. Well, well, you wouldn't give that. Why would that be in question, Jerome? Getting giving their money back is there something that I don't know about? If you get your tag or don't get your tag, do you get do you keep the money either way? We do actually on the the application fee. Yes, typically. You so do. You do I, give. And money in this back. case, I don't know. I you know we'd have to figure that out. Okay. Wait, you normally give people money back, or you don't give their money back? We normally do not. Oh, do uh, not. The control hunt application fee uh, does not go back. So you're you're paying the money to be able to apply, and if you yes. don't draw, then that's, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I get you. All right. So, well, I'll tell you what. We're so gonna we'd, ha- we'd have to figure all that out. Okay. So we'll we'll what? be listening. We'll be standing by, and then when we figure something out, we'll probably give you a call so you can tell us well, what happened. He should tell us when he figures it out. We can't figure it out. Jerome, when do you think you're going to have well, an answer? Well, you guys, when you figure it out, yeah. If you I know. I'll let you know. Huh? We're not that doing Jerome's really job good. for him. Come on. When do you think we will have an answer on this? Do you know? Oh, I think today at some point. Oh, I think. okay. Uh, and I don't know, again, the timeline for sure, but I suspect today, maybe. So you're just kind of waiting for the word from, to yeah, come down from I, Boise. Yeah, we'll figure out what we'll do, and we'll do the yeah. best we can with it. So, Jerome, right. you want to come on tomorrow and announce what you've, you found out? Um, I don't care. Okay. All we'll, right. We'll, 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 we'll talk we'll to you after the show. Yeah, after the show. What time of day? Well, Sometime between 8 and 10. Probably 9 o'clock. You want to come on tomorrow at 9? Um, do you have yeah. an answer by then? 
Yeah, I could potentially do that. Okay, All why right. don't we do that? We'll pencil I just, you, you in. know, I don't want to come on at one because I think the World Cup is on at one and nobody oh, will be listening. Oh, that's Jerome, right. Jerome, don't you listen yeah. to our show? We're only on from 8 to 10, for goodness sakes. I know. I just thought I'd make that point. Uh, okay, well, okay. we appreciate that. So we'll see you tomorrow at 9 then, Jerome. Um, are you saying you want me to come over there tomorrow at 9? Can you? Can you either come in or we could call you. What's, oh, what? I'll come over. Sure. Come over, You need Jerome. a break. You need a break. Get away right, from the protesters. All right. All right. All right. We'll All see right. you tomorrow at 9. All right. Take care. Thanks, Bye, Jerome. Jerome. All right. <laughs> Jerome Hansen, Idaho Fish and Game. He, I, I think he's kind of torn between a rock and a hard place here. He's not sure what uh, – he doesn't want to say something that's not right, and oh. he's waiting for Boise to come down with a decision, and he's dealing with the protesters out in his parking lot. So he's got a, a lot on his plate for a Monday morning. Yeah, you don't want to say welcome, the wrong thing. Welcome to the week. I know, huh? All right, so we'll It can only go uphill from that. here, Jerome, right? <laughs> That's right. It can only get better. It can only get better. All right. 736-0300 is the number to call, and we will be right back. Seven three six zero three zero zero. always the number to call here on Top Story. And uh, there are some uh, folks at Far More of Idaho that you need to talk to. Ask them about Infrared Baron. Infrared Baron believes that a comprehensive imaging service should start with low-cost, high-frequency flights. All right, what this is, is that they make flights over your fields. They take pictures with infrared cameras. They take those pictures and they send them to you on your computer so you can see how efficient or how non-efficient your irrigation system might be or how your crops are doing with this infrared photography. You can see a lot uh, from infrared photography. Ask them about it at Far More of Idaho. This is not a costly endeavor. In fact, it does not cost. It pays. Mm. So you think that your uh, pivot irrigation is, uh, system is doing well and getting all the crops watered? You might be surprised after you see an infrared picture of your crop. Farmoreofidaho.com or 324-3341, and they can help you out with that. All right, so we got some uh, uh, Supreme Court decisions today. I know we got uh, some calls with opinions on that. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Yeah, I was just going to make the comment of it, it, it just cracks me up how uh, the conservatives now all of a sudden are back in love with the court. Because a couple, <laughs> couple years ago, you got to remember, these are the same guys that said Obamacare was constitutional. And, right. and Jill, you have, over the last couple years, I've heard you more than once say that the Supreme Court disagrees with people when they call in and they talk about Obamacare. So you got to kind of be the same way when with um, uh, the Supreme Court is saying that, that, that uh, corp- closely held corporations with owners that are religious, uh, should have to shouldn't have to abide by uh, certain clauses. I think that you know one of the fundamental things about freedom of speech and freedom of religion is uh, is being protected in that. I, I don't think it would be fair to tell a kosher restaurant that they have to cook bacon. So well, I, think I don't. That, I, don't I don't have to agree with the decision. Well, I mean, yeah, but you I, can't I, slam them for why it. Why not? It's freedom of speech, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you can't. You, you can't on one hand say they're now, great. I don't have to agree with the decision. Wait a minute, we're you talking about Jill with, here. Yeah, she can. Every, you don't agree with every decision. I'm entitled to agree or disagree. Uh, when when did they decide that? Although it's getting close, let me tell you. <laughs> so anyway, um, boom. well, I don't know. the The deal with this whole thing is. Um, Insurance started out being a perk the to get people to, you know, come to work for you. And now all of a sudden it is a required entitlement, apparently. So uh anytime you have a perk, it has always been usually up to the employer to decide what that perk is. So if perks if an employer decides to give a bonus every year in spite of how things go and they do that for a long long time and then all of a sudden they decide that they're not going to do it anymore then uh can the government step in and say wait a minute uh, you have to give this bonus and no that's not right it's the same thing with insurance so when you're providing the insurance it should be up to the provider to decide uh what kind of insurance can be provided and if you don't like that perk then don't take it well, that's different than what this case is about. They're providing insurance, but now they're saying what these third-party insurance companies, it's let me exactly. finish, 
can provide. They're providing Viagra coverage. Why wouldn't they provide um, coverage for women so they don't get pregnant? If you're a religious... Does it make any difference? Why, uh, of course it does. It They're paying for that Viagra. They are provide, doesn't know. That's, this you're is talking a dangerous... about fair now. This not, doesn't yeah, have anything we to do with want This fair. is the package. We should just Take be it or able leave to, it. No, we should be able to discriminate. They're now carving it out of their insurance policies when before they used to offer it, when before they actually have invested in companies that um, did abortion pills or whatever. But however, the plan B is not an abortion pill and that should not even have been considered as an abortion pill i don't know why they allowed them to say that it is it's well, not obviously they didn't ask you your opinion well many medical doctors maybe you everyone don't know says, for sure what's going on maybe like the supreme do. court doesn't my gosh but you know what i think this is a dangerous precedent I, I along with many of their decisions lately i do not agree with this one and uh so there, and I have every right to do that. But let's provide insurance coverage for Viagra and not for women to prevent them from getting yeah, pregnant. See, it's just if you not want, fair. If you want, get back to that fairness it, No, issue. if you want to actually truly be against abortion, then make sure people are protected with contraception. That's how it is. So you really want abortions to go down? Then you should be talking to everyone about birth control because the two are connected and people are not stopping and not having sex. That's how it is. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning, Jill. Good, oh, good morning, my lovely Jill. Thank you. The day's not complete unless you say that. Yeah, you spoiled uh, me. <laughs> listen, is that your day of questions for implementing the law system? Is like now, but this, this is a double standard. When they say, "Oh, my religious beliefs," but oh, just wear somebody wear a turban and be Muslim. Oh my God! That that is oh, they they are scared out of their wits. Right. Well, come on, you cannot have it both ways. If you get if you're going to say that Judeo Christians are running this show, then where is the freedom of religion? There's right. also Muslims. There's also um, there's also Jewish. There's also Catholics. There's a whole bunch of them, and it's like no, Judeo Christians have got to take precedence on this. This is unreal. Thank yeah. you. Well, I'll tell you what, we are out of time, but it is time for the Huckabee Report. He might even have something to say about that. Brought to you this morning by Waddell and Reed at 736-6563. You can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time. Brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed, <laughs> Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger, financial advisor, 736-6563. And uh, thanks to the fact that the Huckabee Report was over, uh, I... Caught almost both you of couldn't, us. You couldn't tell me the rest of your hair story. No, I, I, <laughs> I got it trimmed again on Saturday. The top of it wasn't... You're trying to make yourself look good for our, our clicks cast, our no, video no, no, podcast. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. My girlfriend started the trim in Florida. She said, your hair looks scraggly at the back, and she cut my hair. And then my hairdresser had to fix it a little bit when I came back from Florida. But then when she fixed it, she really didn't fix the top, and then it was too long. She actually didn't charge me because she goes, wow, I really screwed this up last time. So she trimmed the top now, so it's more curly because I do have naturally curly hair. But oh. anyway, it started with my girlfriend, my best okay, friend. Okay, and you've been trying to fix it ever since? Well, it, you know, it starts like that, and then, you know, you have five inches cut off, and boom. So that's what's happened yeah. to my hair. Okay, well. <laughs> and you know what I hate most is when people go, oh, did you get your hair cut? Yeah, and then they say nothing. Okay, fine. What does it mean? It looks hideous. <laughs> Anywho, Didn't I, did I do that? Did I say Jill? No, you got someone your else in. did. You actually said it looked nice the first time. Well, it did. It, it, I don't know it what it looks like now. It looked less scraggly, I guess. Fine, thank you. Okay. All right, I'll tell you about what looks less scraggly. The UPS store—they never look scraggly. You just go into the UPS store, you rent a mailbox, you tell them the door Kelly sent you, and you'll receive one, two, or three additional months free, depending on the length of the lease of your mailbox. Now, people are renting mailboxes, but they're forgetting to use the keywords Jill or Kelly. So go into the UPS store located on the corner of Blue Lakes and Addison. Tell them you want to rent a mailbox. While you're there, you can print, you can ship, you can pack, you can buy a cute little animal card. No drop-off fees for prepaid packages or mail, and you can easily design or upload your projects from anywhere, anytime, and they will print them for you. And they're open on Saturday. How nice is Very that? Very cool, yes. Nice for us. Probably not so nice for them, but hey, who cares? <laughs> it helps you. Tomorrow. Yes. We will be pulling a name out of the hat. Mm -hmm. We will be giving away that uh, another lunch at yeah. the Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center with Kelly and Jill. That's right. And a ride in the limousine. That's right. So if you have not uh, 
signed up for that yet. If you did in previous months and didn't win, you have to re-sign up each month, okay? Each month. Mm-hmm. So if you uh, have signed up in the previous months but haven't for June, please do because uh, and you'll have until midnight tonight to do that because tomorrow morning we'll be pulling a name out of the hat, but the entries will go will end at midnight tonight. I think we were going to maybe think about having – maybe we'll have Jerome Hansen. Maybe, or Steve Millington or somebody will Someone's be able to pull that pull out of the hat. Out of the hat. For tomorrow. All right, so join us for that then. And meanwhile, we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal.